Welcome back to the late, to the Gnome Show, everyone. I am Joshua, your humble host, and it is my duty, nay, my pleasure, to trawl the briny depths of YouTube so that I may bring you the shinies. I cover short films of varying genres, video games, analog horror, and sci-fi, and anything else I think is groovy. I hope you'll enjoy tonight's offerings, content for the blood god. All right. Let's kill the music and blow the screen up and let's rumble ladies and gentlemen skyrim has a lot of choices some of which yes, are a no-brainer while others are still being debated on reddit 11 years later and then there are some choices that are just straight up stupid and chances are you probably <coughs> made some of these stupid decisions during your Absolutely. playthrough without knowing so in today's video we're going to take a look at the worst decisions you can make in skyrim number one returning azura's star the quest the black mm. star allows us to wield one of the most powerful items in the game so long as you make the right decision the quest has you helping a worshipper of azura known as arania in retrieving a daedric artifact known as azura's star to do so you need to meet with nelikar an ex-member of the college of winterhold who helps you in finding the artifact after you've got the artifact and killed the mad sorcerer stuck inside of it you have two choices return azura's star to arania or give it to nelikar who will turn it into the Black Star. The key difference between these two stars is that Azura's star can only capture white souls, and the Black Star only captures black souls. This would already be a pretty easy choice, as the black souls found in humans are far- Okay, I am pretty sure that I returned Azura's star to her uh, to its place because I got Dawnbringer. Uh, and Dawnbringer is, 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 is absolutely fucking OP. ...are more common than the white souls of animals, but to add insult to injury, the Black Star actually has a bug that makes choosing Azura's star have no benefit. This bug makes the Black Star able to capture black and white souls, rendering Azura's star useless. So, make sure you make the right decision. Oh, Number interesting. Two, killing Barbus. If returning Azura's star wasn't bad enough of a decision, then how about getting rewarded with one of the worst axes in the game in return for killing a dog? I well, will never kill Barbus. Barbus was cool. The wrong choice in the Daedra's best friend quest. During the quest, you'll be helping a. In fact, I'll go so far as saying that, uh, like that, the Barbus quest was one of the most memorable quests in that game. Dog with a Brooklyn accent. Particularly because Barbus, of the dog. Find his owner, the Daedric Prince Clavicus Vile. After following the lovable canine across He's a good half of dog, Skyrim, huh? you will eventually reach a cave called Haymar oh, yeah, Shane, where you'll find a shrine to Clavicus, along with a small militia of vampires. After deep Not only that, but you get the the helm of classical uh, clavicle vi uh, clap fuck Clavicus Vile if um you uh complete the quest like and do it the right way, which is arguably a really really good item because I think it helps you with um, barter and trade and a bunch of other things. With the undead bloodsuckers, you not only learn that you fulfilled the vampire's wishes to end their vampirism by killing them all, but Clavicus also grants a wish, so long as a particular axe is returned to him. After doing so, you have the choice of giving the axe back to Clavicus and getting the mask of Clavicus via yep. return, or keeping the axe in exchange for killing Barbus. I don't think I have to why explain why killing a dog is the moral choice here, but not only will you be taking the life of the lovable Barbus, the axe you're rewarded with is pretty terrible. Not only is it one of the slowest axes in the game, but it also has pretty poor damage and an unremarkable enchantment yep. that drains stamina by 20 points. The Mask of Clavicus Vile, in comparison, is one of the better helmets in Skyrim. Yep. Not only does it look badass, but the yep. helmet also makes prices 20% yep. better. Look at all that good stuff. And adds 10 points Make to the speech, right decision. Making it the best helmet. Never kill here. doggos. So, unless you really don't like dogs, I would steer clear of Clavicus. Number three, betraying Parthenax. There are two facts that all Skyrim players never agree betray on. Parthenax Listen either. Can go to hell, and Parthenax is a far superior friend than Delphine could ever be. That yeah, said, uh, it's diabolical uh, um, why anyone would want to side with I someone never chose who's done them, nothing I the but boss you around for 15 hours over this lovable dragon. Killing Parthenax will make the Greybeards refuse to have further dealings with you. Yep. This means they won't help you discover word walls, which isn't the worst thing in the world. But betraying Parthenax certainly is. You mm -hmm. can instead let Parthenax live by siding with the Greybeards. Sure, you can't rebuild the blades and take part in dragon hunts, but at least you'll keep your dignity, not have to deal with Delphine, yep. which is good enough for most players. Number 4. Destroying the Dark Brotherhood 
The Dark Brotherhood is Never without do that a doubt shit the evilest faction that you can join in Skyrim. Not only is murder their bread and butter, but they also have no real morals under Astrid's leadership other than making as much coin as possible. So it should come as a surprise when I say that killing Astrid and her League of Assassins is a bad idea. You all already know how the Dragonborn gets kidnapped to an abandoned shack after stealing a contract and ordered by Astrid to kill one of three suspects. Yet yeah, what many players are not aware of is that you can actually kill Astrid and begin the quest to kill the Dark Brotherhood. This will have you breaching into the Valkyrie Sanctuary and killing all the assassins that live there. You even get a hefty 3,000 gold reward from the Legion for your efforts, but doing Fuck so will lock you out of the entire Dark Brotherhood storyline, which itself nets you a whopping 20,000 septims on its own. This doesn't include the Radiant Quest that earn up to 12,000 gold per kill, a badass horse in the form of Shadowmere, and the ability to marry Muiri's fire. I did some work for the this Empire, but it was some of the, the better quests, the, the like the moral the ones, like some of the other ones. I just Number like, not nah, like that's why I chose the Silas Silas Vesuvius. It may sound hypocritical to want to get rid of Silas Vesuvius after justifying joining the Dark Brotherhood, but the reality is, Silas is a bigot who sees the mythic dawn with rose tinted glasses and defends upholding his family's history as being too important to forget about. Luckily, we can lay Dawnstar's town creep to rest. In the quest yep. Pieces of the Past, Silas sends us on a mission to retrieve the lost fragments of Merun's razor. At the end of the quest, Merun's himself will ask you to sacrifice Silas to wield the razor for yourself. But I do you can though, I do that. To spare the cultist and in return gets a whopping 500 gold. Wow. I can get that from lot. fucking looting a oh, fucking come cave. On. We went against the main villain of Oblivion and we're rewarded with a measly 500 gold. Worse still, sparing Silas locks us out of getting the Merun's Razor, which is easily one of the best daggers in all yes, of Skyrim. Sir. Its damage is equal to that of a Daedric Dagger and weighs half as much. And how can we forget the enchantment that can instantly kill even the toughest of enemies? Well, mm -hmm. you can say goodbye to all of that. It's not yep. even like Silas is someone worth saving. I mean, he's part of the mythic dawn for crying out loud. Absolutely. At least you could justify killing the Dark Brotherhood. But sparing no. Silas just makes you look plain stupid. Number 6. Becoming a Vampire Instead of a Werewolf Vampires had so much potential- Yeah, I re <coughs> I remember- <coughs> I remember looking this up uh, when um, the DLC came out and um, like whether I should like uh, be a vampire or not and I was like, no. Um, one because uh, I'm generally playing a good, good aligned character, um, and like werewolves are decidedly neutral. Uh, I think they lean more on the side of good, uh, or at least the side of nature, which I'm okay with. Um, but the vampires, fuck them. Potential to be an They don't even have good uh, talent trees. Some addition to the game, but reality has a way of disappointing us. And this couldn't be more true with how it feels to be a vampire in Skyrim. Sure, the immunity and it's much fucking harder for no reason nice, either. And vampires can become quite powerful. Welcome, new viewer. How you doing? All the cons of being a vampire overshadow anything good about being one. The sun is now your sworn enemy, so you'll have to become a night owl and get comfortable with the necks of innocence to keep your curse under control and grow more powerful. When you do get to the final stage of vampirism, everyone begins to attack you on sight locking you out of the majority of Skyrim's content, yep. which makes the entire progression feel pointless. If you want your Dragonborn to have a few secrets up their sleeve, then you'd be far better off going as a yeah. werewolf. It's better Not for RB too. more powerful than vampires, but best of all, you can choose when you want to be a werewolf and when you want to be a normal Dragonborn. Number 7. Investing in Lockpicking Contrary to what Bethesda tells you, the skill trees were not all made equal. Some trees are better investments, no matter what kind of character you're playing. Others are almost useless. Case in point, lockpicking. On the surface, lockpicking sounds like a pretty competent skill tree, and with the number of locks in this game, it sounds like it could come in handy for all kinds of playthroughs. But there is one small fact that renders this skill tree useless. Picking locks in Skyrim is very easy. Compared to the breakneck reactions this required to pick locks in Oblivion, Skyrim has a far more laid-back system that boils down to turning a pick until the lock begins to move. Not exactly rocket science, I know. Since there's also no skill barrier for lock picking, you can even pick master locks without spending a single point in the tree. 
And if True. you're ever running short on lockpicks, then you can always yeah. get the skeleton key and just never return it for infinite lockpicking. Number True. eight, buying a horse. There are many purchases that one can make in Skyrim. Some investments can be pretty useful, others not so much. All right, yeah, okay. So with this one, um, you can actually just get a horse from the Dark Brotherhood. So yeah, buying a horse is kind of pointless, unless you just want to buy them all. One example of this would be the many horses you can buy across Skyrim cities. Not only do these steeds come at a hefty fee of 1,000 gold, but they're also pretty worthless 90% of the time, since you'll be fast traveling to most places anyway. And when you do take them out adventuring with you, you'll wish you never had the idea to. Horses will attack anything that moves, despite being pathetic in both health and damage. Don't get me started on actually trying to ride these things. Although they can scale cliffsides better than most mountain goats, horses are also prone to get stuck and take damage from everything. Yeah. This purchase just becomes even more of a slap in the face when you find out that the best horse in the game, Arvac and Shadowmere, are I both acquired free of charge. Yep. Don't, Don't buy horses. Damage, you milk drinker. That almost makes me want to fucking buy the game and replay it, but uh, it's still too soon. I, I spent many years in that game, and I'm not ready to go back and redo that all that. No, I still remember everything. It's like playing Fallout 3. Plus, Fallout 3 is super fucking unstable. So, uh, yeah. Um, all right. Uh, like, subscribe, and share. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments. Let me know what mistakes you made. Um, yeah, um, I do have some nostalgia for this game. Jeez. Alright guys, see you in the next one.